We really hit blackjack for our 21st park, Glacier National Park. There are still over 21 glaciers here in the park, plus beautiful teal lakes, and it's home to one of the most famous road trips in the world. We'll be taking you along the Going to the Sun Road from end to end on the historic and iconic Red Bus Tours, plus showing you our favorite spots from west to east in this bucket list park. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate. This year, we're traveling to 51 parks in 52 weeks. We're visiting all the U.S. national parks in the lower 48 in a special Winnebago Vista limited edition. Each week, we're sharing where to stay, what to do, and introducing you to the people doing incredible work across our national parks. We're at the visitor center to get all of our haul, our sticker magnet and map. And the last time we were here was in 2020 and they had pre-stamped pieces of paper that you could take and then tape into your book. So now we're gonna get the official stamp in our passport book. <laughs> Glacier National Park, located in northern Montana, is breathtakingly beautiful and a dream national park to check off for so many. It's easy to see why with its glacier-carved mountains and valleys, crystal clear lakes, and abundant wildlife. The national park covers about 1 million acres with 90% of it protected as wilderness. So in today's episode, we'll be focusing on the west side of the park along with the Going to the Sun Road corridor and Many Glacier over on the east side. Because of the park's popularity, they've implemented a vehicle reservation system for the busiest times of the year. This is mandatory in order to enter the park. All the information on booking windows, fees, and timing can be found on their website. If you have a camping or lodging reservation or a pre-booked activity like a boat tour, you do not need to secure separate vehicle entry tickets. Once we were in, we headed to our site at Apgar Campground, which is located on the west side of the park. Well, we made it in, but I gotta tell you, this is probably the tightest spot I think we've ever <laughs> tried to get at least a Vista in. The Navion, I don't know. But uh, if you come around on the side, you'll see we are only about an inch away from one of the trees and our slide still has about six inches to go. <laughs> so we're just gonna kind of live with it. This is the best we could do. We read the instructions on recreation.gov. You gotta read the notes. All the notes said about this site was that there was a slope. And so I was like, okay, well, that's no problem. Like, I don't mind extreme grade, but they mentioned nothing about how narrow <laughs> the site was. And honestly, I had to do like a nine point turn to try and make it around because we're actually backwards in this site. But look at the site though. I, I know, know, it's great. It's great. We've got trees. We got a nice fire pit. We've got a picnic table. And the bathroom's right there too, if we need yeah. it. <laughs> and we are only about a five minute walk from the visitor center. So um, we're in a really nice spot. Yes, sometimes you have to kind of try your best when you're trying to fit into the national parks. All right, so we found parking. Score. <laughs> <laughs> That's step one. Uh, we're gonna be doing a double feature because this is one trail that leads to another trail. Yeah, this is Trail of the Cedars, which is beautiful. It takes you through a forest and there's water running through. Some of the sections have elevated boardwalks. So it's very easy, very approachable. And then we're heading to Avalanche Lake, which is one of my favorite hikes here in Glacier. Yeah, the last time that we did it though, it was like socked in with fog. Uh, and then I think we kind of got lost towards the end there. So <laughs> this is a little bit of like a do over. <laughs> yeah, redemption for yeah, sure. Yeah, the weather is much better today. I'm so excited because this has beautiful views of a lake with a mountain, and I'm just hoping that we can see it this time. <laughs> That is hands down one of my favorite spots on this trail. It's just something about the bright teal water with the bright green plants and then the gray rock and the contrast of it all. It's so beautiful. We are almost there. It did start raining, which we were both kind of like, oh my gosh, are you serious right now? There's a little bit of blue sky up ahead and I think that we'll still have a better view than when it was socked in with all the fog. All right, let's go see. The sun's hitting the top of the mountain. Well, we made it to the first beach of Avalanche Lake. There's actually, I think, three or even four. And if you look all the way across, that's where we ended up back in 2020. Where is it? <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> I mean, it is called Avalanche Lake. I know. I wasn't expecting it to be anything but cold, but it's very cold. 
So even though when we were here before it was super foggy, the lake looked much more teal. The clouds right now are doing us no favors at all. You can't even really tell how vibrant it is. But take it from us, it is a beautiful teal lake. <laughs> and I just heard thunder, so we're gonna try to hightail it back. It is a beautiful morning here in Glacier and we're getting ready to go on an all day adventure on the signature red buses. Crown of the continent, it's an eight hour tour. Okay, you ready to go? And just remember, you are in bus 87 because there's a lot of buses up there today. The iconic red buses were the first mode of motorized transportation here in Glacier National Park. They've now been operating for over 100 years and transport about 60,000 people through the park each year. The original fleet of 33 buses made by White Motor Company was purchased for $5,000 each. Today, just one bus is valued around $250,000. Ford donated several million dollars to help refurbish the red buses, which are now considered the oldest touring fleet of vehicles anywhere in the world. One of the buses is still in its original state up at headquarters. I like my bus the best because I have the square windows. I have a dashboard. I want you to look straight down the road all the way to the very end. I want you to look to the left and you see a shadow on the road. That's part of the road to the sun and it's their mirrors that are flashing right now. So far the road bus tour has been so much fun and we have started climbing up the going to the sun road which is very narrow and very steep but you get the most incredible views out over the valley. We're seeing the mountaintops, we're seeing waterfalls. It is breathtaking. The Teutonic plates started to come in. As they started moving against each other, that Pacific plate was so strong, it went underneath that North American plate, pushed it 40 miles straight, it went straight up, and then it slid 40 miles to the east, forming what we call all our Rockies. And then came the Ice Age and they started moving and as they were moving, they were grinding and going across all these mountains and forming the tops of these mountains. So that tells you how big the glaciers were, over 10,000 feet. Just over my shoulder, you can see the hanging valley that was created by the glacier. You can see it looks just perfectly swooped and then there's a waterfall coming straight down from it. Beautiful. made it to Logan Pass and right before we got here we saw a mama mountain goat with two little babies. They were right on the side of the road and we got amazing shots of all of them. It was so cool. The last time we were here it was late fall in September for Howard's birthday and so the landscape looked very different. It had like vibrant oranges and browns and it was very beautiful and now we're here in summertime so everything is green and blossoming and it's very cool to see the difference. Logan Pass is the highest elevation you can reach by car here in the park, making it a very popular stop. There's a great visitor center and store here, as well as several hiking trails if you have the time. We still had a lot of ground to cover over to Many Glacier, so it was a quick stop for us before it was off to see one of the most easily viewable glaciers along going to the Sun Road. Seeing Jackson Glacier kind of reminds me of when we were in Alaska and we did Exit Glacier and they had to keep moving the trail because the glacier continues to recede. If you look over my shoulder, you can see how much this one's receded too. And these are the scrapings. As the glaciers came through, you can see how this all got scraped. Now the mountain right behind Wild Goose Island, that is called Fusillade. You see how it's in a point? It's a horn. Four glaciers came uh, around that mountain, all surrounded it, and they formed that peak. Like in uh, Switzerland, they have the Matterhorn. We're here at the beautiful Sun Point, and this was the site of three historic chalets, and you can see why they built them here. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. But unfortunately, in the 1940s, the Chinook winds, which are really strong winds in this area, destroyed most of them, and then they were eventually torn down. We made our way over to Many Glacier, which is an area of the park we had never visited before. It's often referred to as the Switzerland of North America, and you can see why. Many Glacier Hotel sits on the shoreline of Swift Current Lake. This is the largest hotel in Glacier National Park and has a great restaurant with picture-perfect views looking out over the lake. During our Red Bus tour, we had time to grab a bite at the Ptarmigan Dining Room, featuring a wide selection of reasonably priced dishes and drinks, including a surprisingly robust wine program featuring selected pairings available by the bottle or glass. That was so much fun. What just happened? <laughs> we saw a ton of wildlife 
Oh my gosh, that was the most wildlife I think we've seen in a park in a long time. We saw bighorn sheep, mm -hmm. mountain goats. Yeah. Today was my first time ever seeing mountain goats. And I had seen pictures of them, like drawings and like stuffed animals. You know, you go into like a gift shop and they have the mountain goats. And so they always looked super cartoonish to me. And they actually look like that in real life. <laughs> like the face of the mom was so, like a little cartoon. Well, the mom also was molting. Yeah, so she was losing her yeah. fur. So yeah. she's not sick or anything. No. That's because it's like starting to get hot here. And so she's shedding all of that. But her face was so cute. Let's just talk about the marmot for a second because that caused a whole fiasco. <laughs> well, the marmot ended up going underneath the red bus. And then some people came alongside and had to shoo the marmot from underneath the red bus. Uh, and then it was somebody else's problem. Yeah. Uh, because it kept like working its way down to other cars. The red bus is a must do. You don't have to do the full eight hour experience like we did, but I would highly recommend it. If you only have one day in the park, this is the way to do it because they're going to take you to all the major destinations. They will drive the going to the sun road, which some people actually have a major issue with because yeah. it is a little windy and a little narrow. <laughs> and it is very cool how they have an open air roof. I will say I learned a big lesson, which is to put on sunblock and bring a hat. I don't know if you can tell, but we didn't do either of those Let's observe uh, Kaylin's <laughs> nose. My face, uh, you know, I'll, I'll brown out. So definitely prepare in that way. Uh, but yeah, the whole thing was just great from start to finish. It was really a fun experience. Uh, Debbie told so many different stories. We learned a lot. She's been doing this, by the way, for 19 her years. Her and her husband. Absolutely incredible. Like what a career. To yeah. be... Well, this is their post career. This is their retirement. That's right. Yeah. And she also demonstrated a couple of interesting things, including what glacier dust is. That is what creates this magnificent teal color. So when we did Trail of the Cedars and that gorge that I love so much, that color comes from the glacial powder. And same thing with the creek up the street here. It's just such a beautiful teal color. And yeah, I had no idea what created it. So now no. I know. Apparently it's a very fine powder that gets suspended in the water. And then that kind of refracts the sunlight and that's what causes the teal color. And to top off an amazing day, we had an amazing meal at Russell's Fireside, which is inside of Lake McDonald Lodge. So we started and ended the tour at Lake McDonald Lodge and boy, what a treat the dinner was tonight. Oh my gosh, so good. So we had a charcuterie board that had duck on it, which was phenomenal. Like chef's kiss, so good. And the cheeses, it was like a goat cheese. You made like a little goat cheese, mustard, and duck. I can't, I can't <laughs> help it. With charcuterie, I, I know it's not adult Lunchables, okay? But I like to make my little sandwiches. It was very good. Yeah. We think having a meal at Russell's Fireside is a must do when you visit Glacier. The dinner menu features dishes using sustainable sustainable, locally sourced ingredients. Howard had the farm-raised steelhead trout, which was sourced through a Native American partnership. And my steak was cooked to perfection. Make sure you save time and room for an incredible dinner here at Russell's Fireside. Well, we always recommend ranger programs because if you want to learn more about a place and go deeper and behind the scenes, ranger programs are great and they're free. This one was really interesting because fire is such a huge part of the story here at Glacier National Park. And as you're driving through, you will see the remnants of several of these fires that have happened over the past few years. So it was very interesting to learn a little bit more about how it affects the area and how they treat fires here in the National Park. So there were six major fires in 2003. This is a map that shows all of those fires in that year. But this was the Robert fire of 2003. It was a human caused fire that was outside of the park and we needed about a thousand firefighters to help contain that. Before we would turn into Fish Creek, this is what that fire had looked like. Wow. So it was a huge fire, a lot of damage. They do want to just let it burn. However, if it's going to affect areas where there are a lot of humans or structures, then they'll try to protect those structures. And Ranger Caitlin was great. She came armed with information, but also photos and really helped to give us a better perspective of what happens in a fire, even to this location. And whether they're offering a Ranger led hike on this specific trail or not, I definitely think that you should do this. This is only 10 minutes from Apgar Village and it is a great trail that has big rewards. So you go out and you get beautiful views of Lake McDonald and the water, oh my gosh, the color and the clarity is just 
so beautiful. Like I was just standing there and watching it and you've got boats going by and that in and of itself is worth it to come out here to Rocky Point. Plus it's not nearly as crowded or busy as other areas of the no, park. I so this is kind of a hidden gem. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like we've only seen a handful of people. So that is our hot tip is to come out to this side of Lake McDonald. So Lake McDonald is about 10 miles long and the deepest part is about 494 feet. And then as you're driving down the going to the sun road, you will see that this entire area is burns like we had talked about earlier. So the rocks, there are a lot of red and green rocks that you can find throughout the park and that's a rock called argillite. And so the red ones have oxygen in them and the green do not, but very beautiful colored rocks around here. You can definitely uh, swim and kayak in this lake. Dogs are also allowed to swim in the lake, which is very exciting. I think it's very exciting, <laughs> but it's a great area to just recreate and spend the day out here. After our morning ranger hike, we decided to head back out on the Going to the Sun Road, which truly is an incredible feat of modern engineering. When Glacier was designated a national park in 1910, there were only a few miles of dirt roads here. So with the need to make the park more easily accessible, planning began on what we now call the Going to the Sun Road. However, the initial proposal included a steep climb up to Logan Pass with 15 switchbacks. Luckily for all of us, the switchback idea never came to fruition. This is the loop, which is the start of the tricky part of the Going to the Sun Road. It's also the only switchback, because on the entire rest of the route, this road follows like a snake all the way along the ridge. Just imagine for a minute what it took to build this road along the side of the mountain. The crew of workers had to climb 3,000 feet each morning to get to the survey sites, and then had to work along ridges and cliff sides. According to the National Park Service, there was a 300% turnover rate during the beginning of the project. It was eventually completed in 1933, opening up access to the interior of the park for millions of visitors like us. One of the best things about driving the Going to the Sun Road or taking the road bus tour is that you can stop and get out at so many different overlooks or little short trails. And we just were on a boardwalk trail where there were mountain goats walking on the boardwalk, which I was very surprised about. Well, and they acted, and rightfully so, like this was their home. They were all over the place and they seemed to actually like the grates, like yeah. the, the walkways, they seemed to like them which I thought was interesting. Like I would have expected, I don't know, to be in the grass or right, something like that. because they've got these little like hoofs and they're walking on these grades. And then they were climbing up the rock wall, which makes sense because they're mountain goats, <laughs> but it was just funny to see and the baby would follow. But it's also a very good reminder because we were seeing people who are not practicing safe distance from wildlife. So just give the wildlife space. They're wild. You don't know what they're gonna do and you don't wanna be in a situation where they get hurt or you get hurt because it's no good for anybody. Yeah, I mean, in the case of the mountain goat, it's not as if they can hurt you as bad as some other animals, but just because they're cute and cuddly doesn't mean you should get closer to them. Well, that's a wrap on park number 21. Glacier National Park, and this is also a wrap on this RV. How fitting is that? The Glacier Edition in Glacier National Park is its last park. But don't worry, the National Park Tour is far from over. and We'll explain everything soon. We gotta pack up, but we'll see you next week. Join us next week for a live chat. We'll share our upcoming travel plans, next parks on the tour, and answer your questions live on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.